in the house of the Lord today. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Ain't he good? I appreciate his mercy tonight. Well, the Bible said his mercy endured forever, didn't it? Ain't you glad of that? We thank God for his mercy tonight. Let's turn around and take somebody by the hands of good to see in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
If you say amen. Hallelujah. No matter what the trying times are, what we have to go through, praise God, it's going to be worth it all. Just to hear Jesus say, well done. Amen. I'm good and faithful, sir. You come on in. You've been faithful. Hold a few things. I'll make you rule over me. Praise God. How many of when it's done, it's done. When it's over, it's over. Praise God. The Bible said, He that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. So I encourage you tonight to keep on keeping on. And don't let nothing turn you around. Endure to the end. Fight to the end. Praise God. He that endured to the end. The Bible said, The same shall be saved. Didn't he? Praise God. I'm encouraged today to endure. Praise God. I'm encouraged to stay in the rain, stay in the fight. Not be discouraged. But believe the promises of God. Believe the Word of God. The greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world. God give us this promise, this word, that what he's put in us is greater than opposition. So we have no need to give up. We have no need to throw the towel in. If you've got something greater than the enemy, why quit? Why not hook it? I said, what's inside of you is greater than what your enemy has got. Why throw the towel in? You know, if you don't knock down your opponent five times in the first round, and you look around telling your man to go to Thailand, he said, you're a fool. And you don't want to be. Why do you want to throw the towel in? You don't knock them down five, but I may not get whooping. I was a greater seed that's in you. We've just got to believe that what God put in us is greater than what our opposition is. We know that. The opposers of Satan. I said, the opposers of the devil. He said, behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy. Amen. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall be able to hurt you or harm you. So nothing will be able to get through to you. As long as you're staying, place you, hold away with God, don't give the devil an upper hand. Nothing he's got can get to you. And it'll get greater and stronger as we grow in the Lord. We put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We take off the old man and put on the new man, which is great after God in righteousness and true holiness. The more we put on of Him, the less the threat the devil becomes to us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You believe more. I said you believe more. I remember once I had a this a vision, I was mad at the devil, and I was looking for him. And I stepped out in this huge stadium, and nobody was in there. And I stepped in, and went about with me. It was dark, dim. And I said, Satan, mm. I challenge you. Mm. Satan, I challenge you. And a small voice spoke in my ear. I said, in the name of Jesus. I said, yes, in the name of Jesus. The Lord was there teaching me where the power is. I said, in the name of Jesus. He's given to us, but we have, a, we have to use a, a certain route to, 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 to bring it out against Satan. And the, the way you do it is in the name of Jesus. And I was mad at the devil. 
I was challenging him. And I wasn't saying Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I was just telling him. I was challenging him. That small voice of everybody's ears. In the name of Jesus. I said, yes, in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. Say, I'm Come on. And I look. And here come my line. About that tall. He was growling and pouring. And I rebuked. I said, I rebuked you in the name of Jesus. He, he turned into a little old lamb. Mm. He was showing me the power that's in the name of Jesus. That the, that the real enemy that we face is real. And without the name of Jesus, without the power of God, He'll destroy you. He's, and He's destroying them every day. Suicide, wrecks, shooting. Young people are dying. Like, it's awful. It's scary. The way people are being uh, uh, heartless. And heartless. People used to give you a chance. They don't give you no chance no more. First man makes the move. First man gets up a hand. The other just had it. We're in that time. We're in that day that the Bible spoke of. In the last day. You know, he said in the days of Noah that every imagination of man's mind had become continually evil. We're in that time, we're young. Uh, just, just last two or three days of uh, three young people. Uh, one was shot up through down. One man shot him, killed him, and two kids. Why? They're so awful. It's like they're just sleeping people. And another uh, young lady was killed in the wreck. And she had, I think, two kids. Uh, and, and then this afternoon another, another uh, young man shot himself and killed himself. Just on and on and on and on. It's like it's just it's leaping deeper. We need a revival. We need a revival. The church is a responsibility to stand up and the way we stand up against the situation. I guess the devil is through prayer. Come on. See, prayer is our, our, our power and force yeah. against the devil snatching. And the bad part about it is, is, is the devil snatching these people out. People getting in such a frame of mind until they figure the best way out is to shoot yourself. You're in a bad frame of mind. Yeah. When you come to the place and you show an oppression, the devil puts you under that oppression, that suicidal spirit. Yeah. He convinces you. Yeah. Jump. Just jump. The best thing is to jump. You ain't going to make it out of this no man. End it all. But you're not ending it all. That's the bad part about it. You're not ending it all. But we in a time that the church needs to be on our knees, prevailing and praying and you know, that's where revivals back in history, as we read the history of revivals, folks were praying. People's burden. It was on their knees, crying out to God. And things broke suddenly. And changed. And revival swept in, swept nations, cities, and the world. Affected the whole world. You know what? What, brother? See more, Brother Lee prayed, and then they changed a, a prayer meeting to a Baptist woman's house. And they went into prayer, and the Holy Ghost, Brother Lee got the Holy Ghost to come in to that Baptist woman's house, and there was six people seeking the Holy Ghost. He come in speaking in tongues, the Holy Ghost fell on all six of them at once. And said, for the next morning, see, it don't take God long. Is you just get that breakthrough. Once that breakthrough comes, it begins to spread like like you're pouring gas on fire. 
We can't stop it. Too. The devil can't put it out. It said, but the next morning, you, know, you couldn't get nowhere near that Baptist woman's house. And in those times, 1906, uh, in those times, there wasn't, uh, wasn't no way you get no quick advertisement down. It was just the Spirit of God drawing people. The Spirit of the Lord drawing yeah. people. And said, but the next morning you couldn't get nowhere near that woman's house. And said, for three solid days, everybody came through the doors to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And they moved it to, to Azusa Street. And for three and a half years, God moved so mighty. But you know, there was somebody praying. Brother Seymour was praying five hours before that revival broke out. And then after it broke out, he was praying in up little place up top of the roof up there, the log. He was praying seven hours a day. But God was moving. Praise God. I said, God was moving. And do you know that revival affected the whole world? People jumped ships in Africa and India and China and all around the world. The word got out somehow. Hallelujah. That God was moving in Los Angeles, California. At a place called Azusa Street. And people are headed there from all over the world. God began to drop it. The power of God began to drop it. And people begin to come from around the world just to get there. And it's got to be something to draw folks from around the world to a little old 20 by 20 building. Nothing fancy. <laughs> Nothing great. Just a little half run down place. But what made it famous and what made it great, something was going on there. The Holy Ghost had fell. And the power of God was moving and miracles and signs and wonders was taking place. That's what made the difference. was the fire and the glory that it fell there. They even tried to you know, because when Brother Seymour went there, he went to run a revival at, a, at one of the bigger churches. And he preached that Sunday morning on Acts 2. And he went on, but the Holy Ghost hadn't been poured out in America. But it, one lady had got it in Topeka, Kansas. And They said for Brother Seymour, they run into him in, you know, Galveston, Houston. And this lady told him about Brother Seymour, and they sent for him to come to California to run a revival. He got away and preached that Sunday morning on Acts 2. And they went out, him and Brother, Brother, invited him to go home and eat with him. And that's why they used to do preachers, you know, back then, what you know, to go out and eat. And they come back with a night service and the church was packed up. They asked around what, what happened, what's going on. They said, we don't believe in that stuff. We don't, we don't, we don't believe. We don't know if that's right or not. But it didn't stop them. They went to pray and they started praying. Yeah. Praise God. Oh, yeah. And Brother Lee, he, he had prayer meeting in the, in the basement of a bank where he worked. He didn't know whether it was real or not. But he prayed and Peter and John one day appeared to him speaking in tongues and shaking in the Holy Ghost and said he took off running and tried to catch them and ask them about it. And they disappeared. But he come back that evening convinced and told Brother Seymour, I know what you're preaching is right. He told him the story. They really got down to business. And was praying, and then they moved uh, Brother 
Brother Lee asked Brother Seymour to pray for him to get the Holy Ghost. He laid hands on him. He hit the floor and jerking him. The Holy Ghost is tearing him up. And his wife starts screaming hollering and said, take that off of him. You killed him. Take that off of him. You killed him. She went on so bad until Brother Seymour had to pray and ask God to take it off of him. So at that time, he, God took it off of him. They kept on praying. And Brother Seymour, another lady laid hands on Brother Lee. He got the, a lady from Topeka. Laid hands on Brother Lee. He got the Holy Ghost. That's when they went changed the prayer meeting to the Baptist woman's house. And then when Brother Lee came in the prayer meeting that night, all six of them speaking their tongues, all six of them got the Holy Ghost. And then overnight, the crowd just swore. It's overnight. There ain't no way no advertisement could get out. It was the Spirit of God. And that's what it takes. There's got to be a power greater than television. There's got to be a power greater than the media. Didn't have it back then, but people come from all over the world to get to Los Angeles, California, because God was moving. And that's what we need in this generation. Something that will shake the world like that revival. Like, like the, the Book of Acts and the Day of Pentecost. God had all the nationalities of people there, over 17. Where when the Holy Ghost fell, they were taken back to their, their country. And the Holy Ghost began to sweep the world. God knew what he was doing. He had them to meet up on the day of Pentecost. See, Pentecost didn't have nothing to do with God. That was a that was a, a feast day. It was a feast day. Pentecost. And And they were there gathered up on the day of Pentecost. See, the Holy Ghost was Pentecost. They, they named it that. But it, but it was on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. It's when the sound of heaven would come. See. Like a mighty rushing wind. Yeah. It wasn't Pentecost. It was a day of Pentecost. Right. Yeah. When they was up there at that party, there was about 120 folks up there in the upper room waiting on God. He said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but you tarry. In, he, he gave a Pacific, Pacific place. When God calls you, He calls you to a Pacific place. And when we're obedient to Him, it will work. He said, Go to the city of Jerusalem and tarry until you be endued. With power from on high. Yes. For after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Yes. Power to be a witness. And those you got to have power to witness a man of power. I said, you got to have power to be a witness of Jesus Christ. Because he's a man of power. Hallelujah. I said he's a man of power. And you've got to have power to witness. To be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. There's got to be a, a power in you. Not, not a worldly influence. But the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. Not a worldly influence, but the power of God. It's what it takes. To break through the elements of sin, the elements of the devil, the elements of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, it takes a power. It takes a power. It's more than education. The devil ain't scared of education. He's scared of the Holy Ghost. He's scared of the power of God. He's scared when you believe in God that you've got faith in what God said in the Bible. The devil fears you. He 
He sears you. He sears when you believe what you've got is more powerful than what he is. Well, the devil's a big old devil. Yeah, God's a big old God. And Christ is in you. He, he told me, he said, I'm going away. But he said, I won't leave you confidence. I will come to you. Hallelujah. He said, I'm with you now. But in that day, I'll be in you. See, we got to recognize. He's in us. That the Jesus that walked around on the face of the earth now walks in our feet, talks through our mouth. Hallelujah. He said in that day, he's talking about the day of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In that day, I'll walk in you. I'll talk in you. I'll be your God and you'll be my people. This is who we are. This is what we are. Thank God. He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. You ain't got nothing to brag about. You got something to praise him about. I said, you ain't got nothing to brag about. But you got something to praise him about. Who he is, who was, and who is to come. He is still alive.
that makes us different from the rest of the world. He said he made us kings and priests. Hallelujah. Kings and priests. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I said, thank you, Jesus. He said, I'm with you. But in that day, I'll be in you. He said, I'm, I'm going away. I can't stay here. But said, if I go away, I won't leave your comfort. I'll send you another comfort. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that comfort. Thank you for the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let him take over you. Let him abide in you. Let him possess you. Let Jesus possess you. Let the Holy Ghost possess you. It's time to go on in the perfection. Into the fullness yeah. of the stature and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. Yeah. Let us go on into perfection. Now to him that's able to keep you from falling. And to present you far. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to present a people faultless. There's going to be a church stand there without spot, blemish, or wrinkle, or any such thing. Hallelujah. God's going to perfect His church. God is going to perfect His church. God's Word is powerful enough to make you and to mold you and to shape you and to form you and to fashion you. God's word is able to transform you, to grow you up, to raise you up in his image, in his likeness. It is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. All things. It will cut. Even to the southern, divide the soul, the spirit. It's a discerner. God's word is a discerner. You can't hide from God's word. It'll find you. God's word will find you. It don't mean the preacher's picking on you. It's just that God's word can find you. Hallelujah. It don't mean that somebody's told him to preach or something about you. No, that don't mean that. I'm not saying it ain't possible. But I can tell you what the Word of God is a discerner. I said the Word of God is a discerner. He can discern when you ain't told nobody. He can tell you when you ain't told a soul. He can seek you out. He can suck you out. He can seek you out and find you. And then turn around and deal with you. To your own good. For your own good. You know, it's going to happen to somebody. Somebody's going to believe. Somebody's going to receive. Somebody's going to enter in. Somebody's going to grow up in the sons of God. Hallelujah. Does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him said, I got hope tonight. What about you? How many got hope to be like Jesus? That you're going to be like him. Have you got that hope in you? He said if you do, you'll, you'll purify yourself even as he is pure. 
You work on yourself. You give yourself to prayer and fasting and of the preaching of the word. You give yourself to the cleansing. Jesus told him in St. John 17, he said, Now you are clean through the word I have spoken unto you. Now you're clean. Now you're clean through the word. Why do we need the truth? The very reason that they need it when Jesus preached. Clean you up. To wash you. Paul said, we we'll wash for the washing of the water of the word. Jesus said, now you're clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. God's word cleans us. It changes our attitude. It changes our mind. It changes the spirit in us. Hallelujah. It changes the spirit of our heart. It changes the spirit. It will change it from hate to love. From envy and jealousy to love. You not only love your, in, your brother, but you love your enemy. Jesus didn't back down a bit. He said, love your enemy. He wouldn't have told us to love our enemy, but it's impossible. He said, love your enemy. Love your enemy. Do good to them that mistreat you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and speak all the man of evil against you. For my name. Rejoice, he said, and be exceedingly glad. Hallelujah. For great is your reward in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. But he said, I won't leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Hallelujah. He said, I'm with you. But in that day, I'll be in you. And says, you're going to know it's me because I've been with you. Says, it's going to be the same one in you that was with you. It'll be me. By the Holy Ghost. My spirit. My spirit. My spirit. My spirit, man. The Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God. The Father. The Word. And the Holy Ghost. These three are one. I'm with you. But in that day, I'll be in you. You're going to know because I've been with you. You're going to know it's me. How on that day, on the day of Pentecost, there was only one mind and one accord and in one place. Hallelujah. God has sent him to Jerusalem. Said, go. Go to Jerusalem. Go. Go and tarry. Go and wait. Until you be anew. With power. From on high. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, he said, You shall receive power. To be with. Under me. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost is the real thing. It ain't a bunch of. Mess that's like out here in churches. There's a real Holy Ghost. And it's obtained the real way. You seek it the real way. You get it by seeking the Bible way. You go back to the Bible. You go to the original. If you want something real, you go back to the original. He told him to tear. See, this Holy Ghost, if he forget it, it ain't obtained by tearing anymore. They don't know nothing about tearing or fasting and praying. People used to fast for the Holy Ghost. How many of them used to go on fast to get the Holy Ghost? They were so hungry. They go on a fast. And just, I don't even think there's no starting time with the church out there today. Just everybody, all you do is raise your hand. Say what they say. Blah, blah, blah. You got it. Nobody. There's no order. There's no time where the Holy Ghost come on you. 
And you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The time you prayed through. That's what they used to call it. Praying through to the Holy Ghost. But that's what the Bible said. Carry until you be endued with power. On high. Wait there. Wait for it. Wait on it. And it'll come. It'll still come if you wait on it. He said, Behold, I said, the Father, promise of my Father upon you. But tarry. Wait. He didn't tell him how long they'll have to wait. He just said, Wait. You know, that time here and that wait here can prove who really wants it. Well, you know, he spoke about 500 and told them to go and tarry. But only about 120 of them, 380 of them. Never know what happened. Never spoke of them no more. 380. There was more went back. More that didn't go than did go. 120 went. 380 of them didn't. But it didn't stop God from pouring out His fullness. Pouring out something that would shake the world. Pouring out something that would affect the entire human race for the rest what will pour out on the day of Pentecost will have an effect throughout from not only back then on the day of Pentecost but throughout the ages of time and eternity. The Holy Ghost will abide forever. You get the Holy Ghost here on earth it'll go right on through it. The Spirit of God Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It'll be for good. It's that eternal life in you. Salvation. Been washed in the blood. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that would fire. Hallelujah. The indwelling of Christ in you. The hope of glory. The indwelling of the power of God inside of you. To do the very works of God. Hallelujah. That's his will. That's his plan. It's for us now to go and do his will. To go into in the fullness of the power and the manifestation of the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the manifestation and the power of Jesus Christ. See, that's what the world's dying for. Not dying for another mega church. You got them everywhere. Death's a door there. Everything in the book going on in there. No reproof of sin. No crying aloud and sparing none. They emptied out the whole bunch in one night. If the Word of God would empty out a whole church, it's already empty of God. He said, cry out and spare not thee. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgression. In the house of Jacob there, see. See, there's such a weakness of preacher backbone. They know it's right. They just ain't got backbone enough to preach it. They know it's Bible. They ain't got the guts. Face. Them frowning faces. Them hard heads. He told Ezekiel, he said, their heads is hard. He said, I'll make yours hard. Hallelujah. He said, I'll send you among briars and thorns. You'll be like you in a bright patch. But I'm sending you in spirits are so awful, you'll be like somebody told you in a bright patch. I've been there, folks. I've been like I was in a broad patch trying to preach my way out. But you know, God never failed me. God never failed me. I always preach my way out of that broad patch. You may have a few surprise in me, but I'll come out. You have to go home and sit down and pick them out. 
but I didn't let the devil know it. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'll send you among thorns, briars, and thistles. I see you. That's what them spirits was. In the house of Israel, how turn that, that old Pharisee, Sadducee church, that old God hating church, that old backslid church, them people that said they knew God, and Jesus said you don't know God. He said you don't know God. He said if you knew God, you'd know me. You don't know me, so you don't know God. You know, Bible said he that hath the Son has the Father also. You got Jesus, you got the Father. He said, I and my Father are one. When you see me, Philip, you see the Father. How says that? Show us the Father. I'm in my Father, my Father's in me. Not in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going away. But I won't leave you come. There it is, Peter. Jesus. Peter was. Tell God. And Jesus was talking about leaving. And that's why we're in the 14th chapter of St. John. He, he spoke that the way he did. And that early. Chapter, 13th chapter. That's where it speaks about. All that would, it fell on him at once. And Jesus told him here in the 14th chapter. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Don't, don't, don't worry. This thing ain't going to fall. Because I'm going away. Because Peter denied me. Judas betrayed me. Don't mean this thing is going to fall. And it was just going to stand. It's always stood. The time, the storm, the enemy, evil kings and rulers. It took nothing to overcome mighty men. He brought mighty men down and lifted up the rudy faced boy. He sent a, took, sent a little ruby faced boy out there and brought down the giant. Saul and his army was all behind the tent doors with their knees knocking. And he, his dad sent him out to check on his brothers. They were in Saul's army. Yeah. Take him some cheese and bread. Mm -hmm. He got out there and dropped the cheese and bread and run straight out on the front line. He was saying, his brother said, what are you doing out here? He said, we know, we, we know what kind of person you are. David looked at him and said, ain't there a cause? It's not there a cause. Now, in other words, ain't hey, y'all ain't doing nothing. The devil's got y'all in pay. So God may be sending somebody out here that ain't afraid of the devil. Maybe some big man, but not you. About that time, old Goliath came out running his mouth both in the grave. Send me out a man to fight. He didn't know there was a little man there ready to fight. He said, if y'all win, then we'll be y'all servants. And if I win, God will be I. David. Stepped out and said, Who is that uncircumcised Philistine? Who do you think he is? That defying the armies of the living God. I'll fight you. I'll go fight him. Word got back to Saul and they brought him in there and said, Son, who are you? He was, he was he wanted somebody ordinary. Now his size. And not the size of that devil out there. Son, who are you? He said, I'm Justice, son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, you, you sure you want to fight it? So 
You better put on my arm. David tried to be obedient to the king, put on that old armor. And before that, the, we stand out there, and the devils, he put on that armor, and he said, I had proved this. He began to take it off. He took off all that old armor. He said, he reached back out his lane and shot. I don't know what to do with this. God had got him ready. I said, God had prepared him. Not with something to make him look great, but to use him in some kind of way to let people know there's a higher power. There's a higher power doing this. If he went out there in the armor, if he went out there like all the other soldiers and won the battle, he'd have just been a great man without God. But no, God fixed it. So when it would happen, men would have to look and say, there are high power. Somebody is with this little fella. Oh, the God. If somebody is with him, he knows that God just knows how to fix it, to get the glory. And he calls people. They ain't looking for glory for themselves. Listen to what David said. He took off that armor, got a slingshot, swooped him up five smooth stones, loaded his shotgun, his slingshot, sang about Sing about Come walking out there. Oh, Goliath said, I'm a, am I a dog? So I'm going to feed your flesh to the fowl of the David said, you come against me. With spear and sword. Now listen to what he said. He didn't put himself out there in no way to get shot down. You know what he said? You come against me with spear and sword. But said, what I'm coming against you with is with the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Said, I'm coming against you with God. God's on my side. Praise God. God, he gave God the glory. And God came down and fought and won the battle. Lunch and 
to a grizzly bear. It's a bear. He the one to rape. Take out your face, your heart, all the insides, everything in you. Oh, you yeah, like a like a blown out tongue. One ring. He said, I run into that bear. I slew him with my bare hand. I took that lamb out of his mouth. I saved that lamb. Hallelujah. I said, another time, a lamb came in and grabbed one of my father's legs. and said, I plunged into him with my bare hand. I slew that lamb. I took that lamb out of his jaws. Hallelujah. And since you see that uncircumcised devil up there running his mouth, he said, that devil is no more than the bear in the line that I slew. I'm going to take him out just like I took the bear in the line. I took him out with my bare hands. I'm going to take him out with my slain shot. Hallelujah. Single bear. A single shot. No way. Thank you, Jesus. No way. Man, if you're going to face the devil, you at least, you at least need the automatic. He faced him with a single shot. But his power was the power of God. His confidence was in God. He wasn't relying on his own strength, his own wisdom, his own speak out forcefully and strong and mighty and not be afraid that God wasn't going to back him up. This story is for us tonight. This thing is for us that we too can be victorious like God used David to be victorious. That we too don't have to back down from our adversary. We too don't have to be fearful because that devil's nine and a half foot tall and he's growling like a, a mountain lion. We don't have to be afraid. We come in the name of the Lord. We don't come in our own strength. We don't stand up against the devil in our own power. We come against him in the name of the Lord of hosts. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody pray. Hallelujah. He brought that head back down the hill. 
Of that cat. Leave way up there and come down and take a claw and use it for a knife. It's whacked that snake's in the throat in the same place. Shit, shit, shit. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, the snake just grabbed it. Everything he had snapped and grabbed. But he wasn't quick enough for that cat. That cat was too quick. It was death and life now. It's death and life now. Remember, we come to a death and life. We're in a place of death and life. We can't run no more. We can't run no more. We, we got a back. He got a back against the wall. We got to come out fighting. We can't run no more. We got to win this battle. Hallelujah. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We got to finish. That old cat. That little kitten, don't know what he could do. She just went up there and finished. And once she got his head all the way off, she just stood there by and looked at the chair. Here you go. No doubt about it. You're the winner. Sister, you're the winner. You got that right. It was amazing. Oh, it was amazing. It was so amazing. I had a vision once. The snake did it that kind with a big head. And that's a bad kind. Got a big old mouth. They dance. You know, the folks in India plays that little music there dance. Cool. It's like I'd be playing no music for a cold. I'd be swinging at him with a hole, a shovel, and shooting. And he was coming at me. and him, just going right out and around. He was striking. And he'd strike, I'd just slap him, bang, side of the head. He was going at it. He'd come at me again, I'd just slap you know, like I was playing with him. And he went from here again, I just shot, grabbed him, like, took him out. The Lord told me that vision, he said, where he told David, he said, David said, he teaches my hands to war. He teaches us how to fight the devil. Ain't but one way to win over Satan is go for the kill. He don't play because he's after you. He's after you. He, just like that cat and that snake. They both were going for the kill. I said they both were going for the kill. But the cat was just too quick. Too smart. The devil struck. I mean, the snake was striking. But he just couldn't hit the cat. The cat would be out. Time his mouth got that. The cat would be flipped out the way. Back up. We had to jump again. On her move. They're moving around like that. Say, boy, I didn't know y'all had that in They had Being a cat, something else. He said, he teaches my hands to war. Listen to what he said. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house of many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, and where I am you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father. But by me, if ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him. He said, from now on, you know him. And I've seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, sort of confused me. He said, so is the father. He said, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. 
And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. What are you talking about? Satisfy us. Jesus said to him, Have not I been so long time with you? And yet has thou not known me? Philip, he that hath seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou? Show us, then show us the Father. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not in myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else, believe me for the very word you say. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give, give you another comfort, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. See, the world can't receive the Holy Ghost because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him. See, he's coming right back and talking about himself. He said, But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave your comforts. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me not, no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandment, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. Judas said to him, Not his character. Lord, now it is that thy will manifest thyself unto us, and not to the world. He answered and said to him, It is him. It is man. If a man loved me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sins, and the world word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Not only teach you, but he bring back remembrance of what I told you. Peace I leave you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give I to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice, because I said I go to my Father, but my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you, before it come to pass, that when it has come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world coming and hath nothing in me but that the world may know that I love the Father as the Father gave me command even so I do arise let us go kings praise God he touched a great word let's stand on our feet tonight hallelujah Let's just lift our hands and give Him praise. 
glory and honor. Hallelujah for his great name. His great spirit. His great word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That our soul just clings to. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us go on into perfection. Let us go on with Jesus. Let us not look back. Let's don't put our hands to the plow and look back. Can you say, how many wants to go all the way with Jesus today? How many wants to see his fullness? God, I want to see everything you got for me. Lord, I want to obtain everything. I want to grow up. I want to grow up to be like you. I want to be grow up to be just like you, Jesus. I want to love like you. I want to believe like you. I want to preach like you. I want to heal the sick like you. I don't want the eyes of the blind like you. Lord, I want to see the lame walk like you made them walk. I want to see the dead raised up like you raised them up. You said, as he is, so are we in this present world. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory forever and ever. God's kingdom will stand. Do you believe? Baptizing one body. It's not the body. Lord God, God begin to put our faith into action, Lord God. 
In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, God, claim what you said we can do, Lord God. God, you said you gave us power to enemy, Lord God. You know all his power, Lord God. Oh, God, you said we ain't got the fear, Lord, be afraid, Lord God. God, you didn't give us the spirit of fear, Lord, but you gave us power, Lord, and love and a sound mind, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, I thank you for your word, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, I thank you for letting it fall on good ground, Lord God. God, let it take deep root, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, let it make me, Lord God. God, let it shape me, Lord God. God, let it fashion me, Lord God. Let it bring me into that perfection, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, I want to grow up be like you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord God. God, I thank you for this word, Lord God. God, God, I believe that you raise them a people, Lord God. They're going to be without spots, Lord God. I believe in any such thing, Lord God. God, let me be a part of that people, Lord God. God, that you raise them in this hour, Lord God. God, I believe, Lord God. God, I have hope in me, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, I want you to perfect me, Lord God. Help us, Lord God. Help us to go our way, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Help us to take this word, Lord God. Jesus, Lord God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord God. God, we thank you for your mercy, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord God. God, we see the spirit of night in here, Lord God. God, you spoke to us, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord God. You gave us something, Lord God. Help us to do what you gave us, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord God. God, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for your truth, Lord God. I thank you for your blessing, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord God. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord God. God, so many times, Lord God, that you brought us out, Lord God, that you heal us, Lord God, you deliver us, Lord God, you show us your hand, Lord God, we can see your burial with our power, Lord God, God, don't let us be like the children of Israel, Lord God, doubt you, Lord God, complain, Lord God, and mother, Lord God, God, help us to have that testimony, Lord God, a Joshua, Lord God, and came, Lord God, when they said, well, they were God, God, they didn't see how big that Change the world, Lord God. But they see you, Lord God. They know they serve a greater God, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, they know that you was more mighty, Lord God. They see your work, Lord God. How you speak the Red Sea, Lord God. How you brought them out, Lord God. God, they do them change one nothing to them, Lord God. Help us to have that kind of faith, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. That they doubt you, Lord God. But believe you, Lord God. Let them look at what we see, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Start confessing with your word. Say, Lord God. God, I thank you for your truth, Lord God. I thank you for your word, Lord God. God, I believe your word, Lord God. God, I ain't gonna doubt you, Lord God. God, I'm gonna believe you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, I'm gonna come out, Lord God. I'm gonna come out victorious, Lord God. I'm gonna win, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. I ain't gonna let the door put them in the room, Lord God. God, can I serve you, Lord God? Greater than he did he did the word, Lord God. God, I thank you, Lord God. God, I thank you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Thank you for your word, Lord God. Thank you for your truth, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord God. God, thank you for saving my children, Lord God. Oh, God, I believe, Lord God. God, that you're going to bring me in, Lord God. God, the devil can't have him, Lord God. He's a lie, Lord God. Oh, God, you're going to bring him in, Lord God. You're going to bring our Lord one in, Lord God. God, I thank you, Lord God. Oh, God, I thank you for your truth, Lord God. God, I thank you for your word, Lord God. God, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your mercy, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy, Lord God. Thank you for your truth, Lord God. God, your word still work, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. We just got to put in action, Lord God. God, I thank you for the word, Lord God. God, I thank you for letting it take root in me, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord God. Oh, God, I believe in Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord God. Oh, God, forgive me, Lord God. For my wrong doing, Lord God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Forgive me, Lord God. For my sin, Lord God. God, it ain't true, Lord God. It's me, Lord God. Oh, God, I think my help be, Lord God. But wash me in your blood, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord God. Oh, God, thank you, Lord God. Oh, God, I yield to you, Lord God. I yield to you, Lord God. Help me, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord 
Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, God, help us, Lord God. God, one more time, Lord God. God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your mercy, Lord God. We thank you for your truth, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, we hear your word, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord God. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your mercy, Lord God. Thank you for your truth, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Help us tonight, Lord. Help your people. God, strengthen your people, Lord. Lord, in this day and hour, time we're living in, we need your strength. Lord, we need your courage. We need your faith. that comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Lord, enlighten us and strengthen us. Encourage your people tonight to believe. Oh, God, stand up. Pray. Stand in the gap. Make up the heads. Lord, we pray for this nation. We pray for America. Save us, Lord. Save America, Lord. Nations have fallen before. God, nations have collapsed, Lord. Never going to. We pray for America tonight. God, we pray, Lord, that you'll give us a turnaround. God, a move of the Holy Ghost, an outpouring of your spirit. Lord, sweep this man. God, just like them old hurricanes comes in, Lord, if, if man could control them, Lord, they'd stop them and let them come in. But Lord, they can't control them. They come in tearing up houses, and cars, and trees. Lord, they can't control your power. Neither can, can they stop the Holy Ghost. Lord, just like them old hurricanes come in, Lord. Lord, the Holy Ghost can sweep, Lord. God, just tear down the devil's kingdom. Tear down the devil's house. Reap up, rip out, Lord. Bring in the lost souls. Lord, God, your spirit, let it sweep this country. Let it sweep America. Let the Holy Ghost go from east to west and north and south. Lord, let men come. Be drawn to you, Lord, with weeping and wailing, repentance. God, on their knees, oh God. Lord, turn our house, Congress, and Senate. Lord, the White House, turn it back to you, Lord. God, turn, put righteous men, put praying men. Take out these old devils and put praying men in office, Lord, in the state house, in the county house, in the town house, in the city house. God, uh, put men of righteous men, people that will stand up, Lord, for God. People that will pray and do righteousness, Lord, and judgment and right doings. Oh, God, help us today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that things are turning. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for what states are doing, putting the Bible back, the Ten Commandments back in the classrooms. God, we thank you that things are turning. Oh, that's what we've been asking. And Lord, you told us suddenly something would happen suddenly. And it has. God, things are changing. We praise you. Lord, I saw that flag flying high. You moved for America again. And all the nations of the world feared us again, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you for turning these states, Lord, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Lord, the Bible, and prayer. Oh, Jesus. God, we thank you. Make it a law. Make it a law. Just like they made these evil things laws. God, we got men with backbone standing up now making you a law. Making the Bible a law. That the kids have to be taught the Bible. Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you that men are hearing God. 
that God, you're speaking and you're moving through somebody. Lord, we probably don't even know their name, but we don't need to know their name. I pray for them. That you're strengthening because I know they uh, fight the great battle, Lord. We have a lot of evil in this generation. But God, you move it on, not to just Arkansas, Mississippi, Louisiana, but Alabama, Lord. God, all to the states of, a, of the United States of America, let the Bible, God, be put back. Let God be honored. Let prayer be a thing, a usual thing in our schools, among our children. God, let it be so. Take out these old transgender laws, these old perverted laws. God, take away these evil, God-hating things. Lord, if we put it in our children, we'll lose a whole generation. But Lord, you're moving, and we thank you for turning things. You told us you were going to turn things. And you're turning things, Lord. You're moving, and we just ask you to keep moving. God, bring all the states under this. All the, all of New York, California, Lord. Bring down that evil stuff in California, Lord. Bring it down. Drive out them old evil leaders. Drive them out. Or drive them out of the White House and the Congress and the Senate. Drive them all out, Lord. Put in righteous men. Put in men of prayer, Lord, that will get down on their knees in the Hall of Congress and weep before God and the Senate, Lord, and the White House. Lord, put people in there that will weep at your feet, Lord, that will get your mercy for America, that will gain mercy for our children. Oh, God, for this nation that once again God, I believe you. I believe you, Lord. Can I give you praise? I give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. I know you're moving. I feel it, Lord. I feel your presence. I feel your glory. God, you're standing up. You're speaking to us. You're giving us hope again. You're stirring out faith. You're giving us faith again, Lord. Faith coming by here and Hear by your word, Lord. It builds faith in our hearts. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We give you glory and we give you honor. In the name that's above every name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I feel your presence. I give you glory. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Forever and ever. God's kingdom will stand. Do you believe it tonight? Baptizing one body. It's not divided by a man. No, it ain't. Oh, it came down from here. Man ain't going to divide it. God's going to put it together. A man. Forever. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. I said, if you believe it, shout hallelujah. I believe it. Don't you? We're going to change the order of the service. Give you a chance. Bring your offerings, tithes, or whatever you have. God will bless you. Praise Just come and obey the Lord. Thank you, best.